Um, all right. So time is upon us. Um, time to talk about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. So this is the third film in the Guardians of the Galaxy trilogy, again, brought to us by writer-director James Gunn, coming off the back of The Suicide Squad and Peacemaker. Um, and then obviously, you know, right before his big launch as the head of DC Studios with Superman Legacy, what the writer's strike will mean for that project and everything else moving forward, we do not know. But at this time, we are going to dive deep into this movie right now, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, the latest movie from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Keeping things spoiler free here for the first bit, uh, TJ, overall thoughts emotions how was your reaction in the cinema did you cry did you laugh did you hate it did you whatever what did uh, you think of this film i really really enjoyed myself at this at this movie uh really liked it um cried maybe three or four times i'd say i think now are we talking like tearing up or like? oh no I, there was one point where i was like i don't know if i can like imitate it but it was like the quivering like a lip like the <laughs> like that <laughs> and i'm like trying to hold myself together because there's probably like 30 or 40 people in in the theater mm -hmm. with us <laughs> i'm like trying to hold myself together um but no i i really really enjoyed it um you know the, You've the seen act, it once seen it once yeah the action the comedy the acting uh the story it all all worked for me um the the look of it the direction the like not you know and I, I think it's fair to say you know this is one of the better mcu movies that we had in the while in a while in my opinion um but i really enjoyed it you know a few critiques here and there that that left me from really loving it like fully uh, but overall really really solid and i really i do want to watch it again uh, I don't know if I'll go to a theater, but I also like don't know if I can just because it's like I, it was so sad. And if you like if you have any sort of animal that you care about, I think it it, it affects you even more, in my opinion. Dude, <coughs> before I even give my thoughts, I just got to say and I'm going to show it to you mm -hmm. on. This little test subject. Hang on. OK. So on my desk. On top of my box for the microphone, I have this little oh, I have this little baby Grogu, mm -hmm. and the way that the High Evolutionary would grab Rocket, mm -hmm. and he would like he would go like this, he would like right. squeeze, he would like squeeze behind his yeah, ear, yeah, yeah, he and it literally happened, and again that is not a spoil. I think he even probably shows it in the trailer. It's just a touch. It's just a touch that, um, Chuck Woody Awuji. Uh, mm -hmm. who was fantastic. I know we both loved him in Peacemaker as Myrn. Um, I know a lot of people did. Super big fan favorite of that, uh, fan favorite character in that show. Um, it's it's just a little touch that he did that every time he did it just made me like squirm in my mm -hmm. seat. Because I, you know, I have, I know you have a dog. You got a big, you know, chunk um, <laughs> getting bigger every day. Yeah. Uh, but like, you know, I got a little guy. I got a little, you know, Charles is a little cat guy with a head very similar to mm -hmm. Rockets. And when he, I don't know, man, I've seen the movie twice. And every time he grabs him and he puts his like hand under his ear and he like grabs his jaw. I'm like, dude, let go of him. <laughs> like I have like this primal reaction and you just made me think about that. And I just had to mention that because mm -hmm. Um, I guess I'll, I'll just hop into my initial thoughts. It, it, like that word that I said, primal, like this movie is just like, I'll just rip the bandit off. I've seen it twice now. I don't think it's the best MCU movie in a couple of years. I think it's one of the best MCU movies. I, okay, I, I yeah. know that recency bias and right, I know yeah. that I came mm. out of, you know, love and thunder. And I was like, you know, I liked it. It was, you know, good. <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, Doctor Strange, I definitely came out of way higher than kind of where it's landed for me. And then Ant-Man, uh, I, I still do think that Quantumania is a, is a fun movie. I still mm -hmm. will die on that hill. I think it's a fun movie. It's better than Love and Thunder for me. 
we could argue until the cows comes home about multiverse of madness or not but uh we watch it. like <laughs> this movie this movie it just had none of that mm -hmm. it just and i knew that we were in such safe hands because just the opening scenes of the movie the the song opens with and i know people at this is everywhere already it, it opens with an acoustic version of creep by radiohead mm -hmm. i mean that's like i feel like already that song has kind of become synonymous with this movie um and just the fact that first of all how they play that song who's listening to it how it kind of goes about all that but the fact that that song kind of this movie and i we really obviously i want to spend a chunk of this talking about the music because it's so important to this these movies in this trilogy um when the title card came up you know the first title card is peter dancing and you mm. get the hey and it's like oh boom guardians of the galaxy second one baby groot this one is like sad it's yeah. dour it's a downbeat i've said to anybody who will listen to me this movie is about eight people who hate themselves and you know and i think i only say eight because as mantis says drax is the only one who doesn't hate himself mm. um you know and i i just i feel that and, there, and when we get into spoilers i have specifics that i want to mention um specifically about not only peter quill and not only how peter quill is written but i i do think that i think this is chris pratt's maybe best performance in a movie Mm -hmm. um and that's saying something because he gives a phenomenal performance in the first two guardians movies um but i i think honestly this is my favorite performance of his in anything and i say that as a diehard moneyball fan um so that's that's a high bar yeah. for me but um in terms of my initial reactions in the theater i mean just like you and michelle put it in the chat here uh she knows a pfn host needed at least four kleenex from my purse <laughs> Dude, when I saw the movie for a second time yesterday, yeah. there was whole minutes that I didn't see the first time because I was just, I was just, I was, yeah. I was literally, I had my glasses and I was like, oh my God. I was like, I was dying, like so emotional um, and laughing and just, uh, oh man, who was it? Uh, I think it was, um, I think it was Winston A. Marshall on on I watched the the spoiler discussion that um the uh, Christian Harloff had on his channel mm -hmm. um with Winston and and Coy Jandrew, um and I think it was Winston that just was like you know it's it's the first movie in a while that I got caught up in you know I I I wasn't going man you know Sam Worthington. You know, I hate that people say that about Sam Worthington. He is really great as Jake Sully. You know, I wasn't thinking those, like, movie things mm -hmm. watching this movie. I wasn't going, like, man, I wish Zoe Saldana had more to do in this movie, it, which is, I'm talking about Avatar, not not right, in this right. one. Um, but, like, I wasn't thinking about that. I wasn't thinking, like, I wonder what this would have been like with Emma Furman as Cassie Lang. Like, I, I'm thinking that while watching Ant-Man for the first time. You know, I, I oh, what would this have looked like without the volume? Mm -hmm. you mentioned the look of the movie i think and as one of the reviews or whatever that i that i saw um made point to say you know i think a big difference is this movie had obviously a consorted effort to make it look like something mm -hmm. you know you know whether that was your taste or not it looks like something it has a look to it it has a tone to it a vibe um a color palette uh and i i just think it, it was phenomenal um and the performances especially uh i i just i thought it was incredible mm -hmm. very very good um but yeah let's see what's your uh, uh what's, what's your star rating on it okay i gotta reassess because we have six, five, six how long until november What what is it right now six it's, months yeah so six months until november uh, oh, almost to the day. So it's almost six months to the day for the Marvels. Um, so we have a little bit of a gap here. So I'm going to take that time to reassess my letterbox MCU ranking. Um, I only say that because I gave Quantumania a four. 
Mm. And then also just out of an abundance of caution in case this movie, you know, sunk like a stone with me, the more I thought about it, which it absolutely has not. I gave this four stars as well. Uh, and then I did not rate my second viewing yet because I wanted to save it for this. I think I am going five out of five. Wow. Yeah. And that's a that is a Sean that is trying to be more frugal with his star spending. Mm -hmm. um, I I think if I had to think right now, I would probably move Quantumania to a three, really a three point two five, because I feel like a three is too harsh, but mm -hmm. probably a three point five for Quantumania. And this I would give a, a full fat uh, warmed up in the microwave five out of five. Uh, for sure. What about you? Uh, I'm at a four currently. Um, now that might change uh, on a rewatch as well as I'm just thinking in my head. I gave, you know, Multiverse of Madness a four out of four and a half. So I'm like, you know, does that okay, really, you, you know, but I, but on, on, yeah. on rethinking, I'm like, well, I feel like this is definitely a better movie than. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, it's you know, I love Multiverse of Madness. Because it's, 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 your, it's your shoot from the hip. Right. You know, it, sometimes, you know, we don't get to it immediately. But it's, you know, within 24 hours, it's it's how you feel about it. And now you're a year away from Multiverse of Madness. You know, it's kind of it's kind of tough. But um, so would you think you would stay at the four or do you think I, I'd be willing probably to move it up, but I, I'd have to rewatch mm -hmm. it again. Um, yeah. Just wanted to Fair shout enough. out oh, Geek Ledger in the chat said, uh, I got to yeah, say, saw out. it over the weekend. My personal favorite MCU movie and in my opinion, the best MCU MCU movie yet. Now I don't wow. know if that means like the best ever, or is if if he just means like or or she or they, uh, mm -hmm. means like, you know, recently or something like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I, I agree with that as far as mm -hmm. lately. Uh, definitely definitely yeah. up there. Um, would you now just this is just before we get into you know spoilers and all that stuff. Would you say? And I, I was thinking while I was watching it afterwards, and I don't think it's the correct term to say mm -hmm. this is the most sci-fi MCU movie, I feel like, because maybe sci-fi isn't the exact genre that this is, because mm -hmm. it's just, you know, it's just an action adventure comedy. That's what it is on IMDb, those genres. But mm -hmm. I would say, just thinking of, like you said, it's got a feel or like a vibe. This is very mm -hmm. Doctor Who-ish to me where we have these different planets. Yeah, we have the, the animal person planet and we have this weird kind of uh this weird kind of company with these people in these weird suits and we have you know, Yeah, it's just very like, you know, something I'd watch on 100%. the BBC at eight o'clock at night. <laughs> it's very it's very um and I, you know it's funny that you say that exact question because I a lot of people said that about Quantumania. Is there like this is the most like sci fi mm -hmm. Uh, Marvel movie yet, yeah. and I think that both of them, I think Quantumania and this, I think probably are the two most sci-fi, because the first two Guardians movies, I would say, are more you know, cosmic, more Star Wars-esque, and I think that, yeah, I think that this movie in particular, Doctor Who, or even like Star Trek almost, reminds mm -hmm. me of, and obviously between the spacesuits and a, a, a bunch of other stuff, there's direct comparisons to like 2001. Um... A space odyssey not the year right um yeah. and i think i think like um for sure i okay. I, I hadn't really even yeah. considered that but yeah i think probably the most sci-fi straight up just because it's like you know we gotta infiltrate this space station there's a you know it's just more kind of sci-fi serial adventure mm. stuff in this while at the same time being the most dour of, right, yeah. uh, of any of the three yeah. um they somehow managed to like the actual what they were doing uh and then you have like mantis like i just feel like mantis very like she just feels her powers feel like a doctor who character you know mm. could you know but mantis some of the stuff in this she was just killing me and drax um so much to talk about but uh you ready to head into uh into some spoilery territory yep all right well, everybody watching right now, Geek Ledger, uh, The Breakfast Bitch, uh, Michelle in chat there. Brandon, if you're still watching, I know Brandon's it's been tough for him to get out to see movies, mm -hmm. so I don't know if you've seen it yet. Um, but uh, anybody who's watching, let us know all your thoughts on Guardians 3 uh, in the chat right now. Uh, let's go ahead and move over to spoilers here. So, I mean, what do you want to kind of attack 
first. Uh, I mean, I, I'm good to just go scatter shot, just anything that comes to mind, because there's just so much. I can talk about everything. Yeah, I first want to talk about, I guess, just Rocket's whole thing. Um, yeah. As well as, uh, we'll, we'll loop High Evolutionary in there as well, I guess. Yeah. Uh, for me, like, I thought that whole story with Rocket and these friends that, you know, he has in, in they're all in these crates and mm-hmm. trying to dream of a life on the outside, I'd say, um, you know, Rocket oh, coming God. to the realization that they're all gonna, they're all gonna, you know, die, uh, and trying to save that. I thought that was just, that was just heartbreaking. Like it, mm-hmm. I, I, dude, when she, when, just... <laughs> when floor starts screaming, when, ugh, like when Rocket is just the, ah, like, yeah. he's just a little guy. Yeah. Like he's just a little guy and his whole world is falling apart and he just doesn't, no idea what to do other than just scream. Mm-hmm. I was um, like, God damn. I found it very interesting. Like the end, like one is like a bunny, but her like mouth has like a metal thing over it and she's got like spider legs kind of. And there's a walrus with wheels for legs and, mm-hmm um what's the other one uh lila lila the, she's an otter with uh robot lit arms oh yeah, yeah 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 um all those are very kind of interesting designs but also just very sad um mm-hmm. and james gunn i thought he just did a really good job of you know building up kind of in a, a very sh- i feel like a short period of time you know we get a little bit with them we don't get a ton because that's mm-hmm. that's one way he keeps Rocket in the movie because Rocket's really not much like around like present. You know, he's yeah. it's very much flashbacks. Um, but I felt like he did a good did job of building up the kind of about that. Because I, I mean, obviously in the marketing, <laughs> Rocket yeah. was huge front and center, and everybody mm-hmm. was like, "This is Rocket's movie. It's Rocket's right, movie." Right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, anybody who could tell you anything would say it was Rocket's movie. So we all just figured, oh, this is going to be Rocket's movie, and then at the end, he's going to sacrifice himself. He's out in the first five minutes. Yeah. Like, he's, he's I was shocked. off the table. I was shocked. Yeah, and then it's all flashback. Like, how did you – I was definitely shocked. Yeah, sure. I, I enjoyed the flashbacks. Um, I thought they did a good job with them, you know, kind of seeing, you know, what he had been going through and before, you know, we, we got to know him. Um, I thought, mm-hmm. you know, that was all done really well. Um, and then just to bring the high evolutionary into it, uh, I thought he was pretty just like, he was just a psycho, a psychopath. <laughs> like, yeah. like, you know, and I think, you know, there's that one line, I think where Rocket says like, he doesn't want to, he doesn't want a perfect world. He just like, want, he just doesn't like the way it is or something like that. Yeah. Um, and you know, I think maybe maybe we could if if we had more time or something we could have gotten more into that kind of high evolutionary mm-hmm. what his kind of end game is like i while i was sitting there i was i was kind of while i was watching i was like okay well you know he doesn't want it to be perfect or anything but like what is his like like what what makes it what's the next best thing if it's not going to be perfect you know what i mean like what's his yeah. idea of you know all this stuff him doing all these experiments what's the what basically what's the end game i guess um and maybe he said it but i just kind of wanted to go maybe a little bit deeper into that but uh the performance sorry what's the actor's name i apologize uh chikwudi awuji chikwudi i think you can call him uh chuck that's what everybody called him oh really well, uh, well, well his, his awuji, performance yeah. was just amazing uh fantastic <laughs> What did you think about the like yelling? I've seen this complaint of uh, mm-hmm. almost throughout the probably the one most prevalent complaint I've heard across everything I've watched is like people yell in this movie a lot, but specifically him. They're like it kind of takes away some of his menace. I didn't really mind. It, I disagree. I I thought he was more menacing because he's yeah. just you know he he made he created Rocket and. You know, and then Rocket turns out to be smarter than him. And imagine yeah, I, being imagine being the creator the reaction, and having you your said. creation know more than you. So yeah. now you're the inferior one. But yeah, you know, everybody else around you is supposed to be you're you're the god. And I think at one point, um uh oh my god, what's her name? Elizabeth Elizabeth Debecky's character. 
yeah, or maybe it's somebody else. It might be Gomora. She's like, you know, mm-hmm. everybody. There's parts of the universe where they call him God or something like. Oh that. yeah, it is Gomora. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't know. I thought that added a lot, and I was, you know, he definitely scared me. I, I'm, I'm definitely on the like, you know, he's one of the top tier MCU villains for me, at least. Yeah. I, I am so glad. I, I agree 100%. Much better than uh, Ronan, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah. I, it's crazy how the villains in Guardians, like, I would put him above Ego. Like, oh, I, yeah. I yeah. like, it's crazy how every movie the Guardians villains just got even better. It's like James Gunn was like, okay, I understand these characters. Mm-hmm. So, like, he had more brain power to divert to the villain in every subsequent movie <laughs> like like ronan was just like oh my god i spent all this time on the main characters what about the villain um totally opposite with this guy i totally agree with you i think that the villain the yelling uh d- did not i i won't say like oh it it made him even more menacing i just mm-hmm. thought it was just all part of it yeah. you know to me <laughs> yeah. when he yells it when he pulls rocket out and he's just like, how did you know? Yeah. Where did it come from? Right. If you know it and I don't, how? Like, how do you have independent thought that I don't have? And I love, too, the, the uh, contradiction of, you know, mm-hmm. this is what he's screaming at Rocket about. And in a way, clearly scared. He is scared that he create either he's scared of Rocket as a threat to his knowledge. Mm -hmm. He's scared of Rocket as, oh, my God, I created something beyond myself. Like, like I have no control over this raccoon. You know know what I mean? Like um, (laughs) (laughs) or but then also later in the movie. He's mad about it when he's talking about all the children on the ship this new batch mm-hmm. which also i love the fact that he talked about he says you know i've been doing this for centuries of creating these civilizations uh so like we know he created the sovereign uh and then uh he and then clearly after the sovereign he turned his focus and create and wanted to test with animals and then i like that we saw that all because by the time we catch up to him in the present he's totally over animals He's, mm. done, he's done with the whole... It's like it was just a phase for him. Mm. You know what I mean? Because it's just he's done with the animals. He blows up their planet, which we'll talk about. Uh, and then he's just on to now these all these little kids with white hair, <laughs> I guess. Like, that's that's now his, his current fixation. Um, but I, I just thought that he was fantastic. Everything, the whole, like, mystique around him, I thought was really, really good. That, like, he's not necessarily this, like, evildoer in the shadows... He is somebody that, like, he has this legitimate business, Orgo Corp. He just uses the profits to fund his, you know, I, I they said something like, you know, uh, like, you know, he's not above law or something. Like, like he couldn't just go into, like, uh, the, like, Cree space and mm-hmm. just start kidnapping people for experiments. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he's kind of got to do some of this stuff in the shadows. Like, he's not one of these thanos like he can't be questioned you know by anybody Mm -hmm. i got very much the impression that like if the kree could get their hands on him like they would they would like stomp him out they just don't care to um and so i i kind of liked that bit that like this wasn't some like untouchable guy because very clearly gamora says you know some corners of the of the galaxy you know not all Mm -hmm. um so i i really really liked that um but yeah, and then just the performance on on a freaking raccoon, dude. Like when he's standing there and he's like, "How did you know?" And Rocket's just like, "It was the it was the uh the filters." The fi- yeah. I don't and, Sh- and shout out to like, um the other two kind of voice actors as well that voiced uh or that the actors that voiced yeah. Rocket. It wasn't just yeah. Bradley Cooper. I think Sean Sean Gunn did Young Rocket and then um, Yeah, and then it was it Noah, Noah Raskin did Baby yeah. Rocket. I thought they all knocked yeah. it out of the park. <laughs> they were fantastic, yeah. yeah. And I loved, like, I know that kind of the hype machine for this movie was like, oh, this is Rocket's movie. Mm-hmm. This, you know, over and over and over again. Like, But, like, I, I guess it's just like, it just kind of sneaks up on you how endearing and how beloved of a character Rocket is. Something mm-hmm. as small as when, when, when little kid Rocket 
one of my favorite scenes of the whole movie, the song Since You've Been Gone, uh, which was in one of the trailers, too. Uh, and in the trailer, it's this kind of, like, dour, like, since you've been gone, like, as if, like, since you died or since somebody's mm. died. But in the movie, it actually flipped it, and it was kind of an uplifting scene of him and his friends all playing around and, and playing, you know, tag mm. with each other in the cage and just, like, these hat like, they associated with, like, like Rocket's happy memories of that time, mm -hmm. uh, the very few that he has. Um, and just a little thing in that when they're all laughing and joking and Rocket like starts like slapping his knee like we've seen old Rocket do like that's how old Rocket laughs is he he'll like put his hands on his knees and stuff. And so just seeing that that you're just like, oh, he's like he's becoming Rocket like, mm -hmm. you know, and then even just over the course of the flashbacks him, you know, gathering more speech and talking more and more like uh like the rocket that we know like when he's you know he, giving the explanation and he's like and then it makes and she gives the long thing and he goes yeah thems it makes thems like it's mm -hmm. like like where where is this guy talking and he tries to correct him with like an english accent but he it just doesn't stick uh like i loved all that all that stuff with with little rocket there but what do you want to what do you want to talk about next I, we could talk peter drax oh, let's kind of go we could go character by character. let's talk about adam warlock yeah start, let's talk about adam warlock movie. <laughs> yeah will will poulter uh let's kind of take a character by character here um well how, how did you feel about a his entrance what he had to do in this movie etc mm -hmm. uh and what do you think of will poulter as the character uh, i thought will poulter was great uh, very off put. I was very uh, caught off guard by how he was introduced, where he just kind of mm. shows up. You know, he's just, yeah. you know, you see this guy just hurtling towards nowhere. Uh, and he's like, I oh, I love that I'm shot, here. though. It looks yeah, so yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. Um, I just think for me, it, it th this is one of the, the negatives to this movie, or maybe uh, just something I didn't enjoy as much is I just feel like he didn't have a lot to do. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, we haven't seen anything from him since the end of guardians two, uh, as far as teases to Adam Warlock or anything. And yeah. he shows up, he's clearly powerful, obviously. Um, but they do make it a point to tell you that he is, he is underdeveloped. You know, he was taken yeah. out of the chamber early. Um, and I do kind of like how Will Poulter plays it as this kind of bumbling kind of kid where, you know, he's. He's grown to be 40 or 35, but his mind is like 12, um, yeah. which I find interesting. It just I just don't think he had a lot to do, and mm -hmm. I think they kind of had to find little things for him to do. And he just kind of – it's like, you're, well, you're, you're a villain, but you're not a villain, but now you're on our side. It was, just, it was all kind of mm -hmm. clunky for me, um, and I didn't really enjoy – his kind of hero moment. I don't, it just didn't, it didn't quite work for really? me. Really? Yeah. I, I thought it was going to okay. be, so I did not expect it to be him. Cause I just felt like he was kind of, I don't know. I felt like he had that moment with Groot right before that. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I, maybe he's, but I guess they said second chance. So it's, I don't know. It just didn't quite yeah. work for me. Um, but yeah, Will I thought Will Poulter was great him. and I'm interested to see what they do with him going forward. <clears throat> yeah. I, agree and i don't agree at the same time mm -hmm. because i agree with basically all of your positives but it just really worked for me yeah. i i i liken this to and now i will say i think i i liken this to um you know this isn't the only this isn't the adam warlock movie right. you know this <laughs> is the movie that yeah. adam warlock is introduced to the mcu and so I, I think of it like Civil War with Spider-Man. Mm. Uh, you know, not Civil War with Black Panther, where mm. Black Pan where where Civil War, Black Panther is the third most important character. Well, right. third or fourth, depending on where you put Bucky. You know, like he's the third or fourth most important person in that movie. I put him I put this more like Spider-Man. You know, he is uh important to the movie. He's in the movie, he's getting introduced in the movie. But now what I will hear you on is I think maybe you could say that Civil War handled Spider-Man uh, uh, easier or or quicker or more I concise. Also, because just, I also, real quick, I think yeah. it might be also easier with the character experience just because he's very well known. 
Yeah, it's it's more what is this Spider-Man going to mm. be, not who is this. Right, exactly. You yeah. know what I mean? So I think I think that's a big difference. And like I was saying, I think it's a big difference that Spider-Man, it was like, boom, Queens, mm. and then he's in the movie for 25 minutes, and then he's out. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like he's in for the for the airport fight, and then he's out, and that that's it. Adam is he's in at the beginning, then he disappears for like an hour, then uh or sorry, he's in it, and then he's in a couple more scenes, and then he disappears for like an hour, and mm-hmm. then he shows back up on uh, on Counter Earth. Counter Earth. But you know the whole like the whole entire Orgo Corp sequence of the movie. And the scenes on either side of it, you know, he's nowhere to be found in that entire section of the movie. Um, but I will say, I did think I thought that the hero moment did work for me because he, in the beginning of the movie, who's the main person that he fights is is mm-hmm. Groot. Him and Groot go at it, and he, you know, decapitates Groot. But you know, luckily this Groot, um, and and I don't want to overlook. I definitely don't want to not talk about Groot. Um, I definitely want to talk about Groot in this movie, but you know, he fights Groot. And then at the end it's Groot who tells him, you know, uh, everybody deserves a second chance. And I, I just bought into that. I, I just bought into, he loses his mother. Um, and I liked it multiple times throughout this. And I'll, I'll touch on it again. Definitely. When we get to talking about Peter specifically, um, it, 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 you know, this movie, it's just, it's all kind of fun and games until shit's getting real. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, he's going after, uh, you know, Rocket. He's he's trying to catch Rocket on the ship. He's taking out the, the um, what, War Pig or whatever the one, whatever the yeah, one minion uh... was called. Um, <laughs> like, he's taking out War Pig. And then as soon as he hears the bomb start to go off, he's just like, mother. And then he just, mm. he just goes as fast as he can. And I liked it in the trailer, you know, you see that shot of him flying through the street, uh, trying to go as fast as he possibly can. And in the trailer, you're like, oh, he's probably going after the Guardians or something. But to know that he's just trying to get to his mother as fast as he possibly can, and that he almost gets there, uh, and then, you know, she dies right in front of him. Uh, I just bought that. I, I just bought into it, and I loved... And I don't think you touched on this because you said you didn't buy his hero moment, but I loved his humor. I he yeah. was killing me mm-hmm. when in the final final battle when he like flies into Peter and Gamora's ship. Um, uh, when he like flies into Peter and Gamora's ship and they're kind of having a standoff, and Gamora grabs the what is it, uh, orp or whatever or like what the little oh, creature that, that adam thing. has yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. um when she grabs him and she goes <laughs> she's she's like she's like uh stop right now or, or i'll slit his throat <laughs> and they just in the middle of all this action it just close up on adam and he goes now don't be rash <laughs> like, okay. i i died laughing at yeah. that that was so, that was so funny like uh and just the humor with Gamora and everything, I thought it was so funny. Just the extremes, the extreme swings that she would go to where they're like, we're not going to kill anybody. And she's like, everybody put your guns down mm-hmm. or I'll, I will blow her brains out <laughs> over the wall. Like, you're like, what are you saying? Like, she was so yeah. just like intense. She reminded me of like, of like Nebula from the first movie. Um, but yeah. And then, uh, I think that's kind of everything with Adam. Yeah, it's definitely. Uh, I mean, well, what do we think if we're going character by character? Uh, uh, well, actually, I wanted to just, whole... just I just wanted to see if we could maybe com- go find some of them. So can we do like yeah, a, a Nebula, Gamora, Peter talk kind of that little love triangle that is <laughs> kind of going on, I guess, in the in the movie. Um, um, I th- I thought it's fantastic. Yeah. I I I th- I think we definitely talk about about. Uh, Chris Pratt and everything. Yeah, but I, yeah. I thought just start starting with Gamora. Um, I think that Zoe Saldana does, and James Gunn, because I think when we're talking about all these characters, it's truly an equal parts. Uh, you know, the writing with the performance, because, um, you know, James Gunn, yes, he had kind of a curveball thrown at him with Gamora dying in Infinity War, mm-hmm. but he had all of the tools of sci-fi at his disposal to fix right. it. 
So you Seems know, like could also very that, easily... like like you said, that was very much like, uh, oh shit, <laughs> like oh you're yeah okay, <laughs> you're you're I, killing I her think... off. All right, well, <laughs> yeah, I think what people see, yeah, yes, but also like I said, I think they were like, hey, we're gonna kill Gamora <laughs> in yeah. Infinity War, um, but I think they definitely were like, but you know, whatever you need. We will make it work story wise for mm -hmm. however you if you want to bring her back if you whatever like I think that James Gunn totally could have just been like, oh but good thing her she kept all these video logs, oh and, yeah, you know what I mean like, like that, I, or yeah. like or like oh good thing she always backed up her eye implant you know <laughs> so you know they could have done yeah. anything like that mm -hmm. and then just been like the new Gamora plugged into it oh and she's back. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, but the fact that he kind of almost in a way challenged himself to be like, no, I'm not going to do like an easy sci-fi fix of this. It's she's a different person now. What what does that look like? And mm -hmm. I, I think that a lot of her in this movie absolutely works for me. But I think uh, what sums up in the best moment is when she's arguing with Peter and, um, you know, she's like, just drop me back off with my people. And he's like, your people, you're not even a Ravenger. I'm a Ravenger. And then at the end of the movie, uh, you know, she goes back onto the Ravenger ship and they all give this big bear hug to her. And Stallone's like, oh, welcome home. You know, like, yeah. and, and it's like the <laughs> yeah. whole thing is that, like, Peter's like, you know, that's what. And then you found your family with the Guardians. Like, it, this movie is about he's got to understand that she's a different person and we find out at the end that she this version of gamora did find her family mm. you know she she already has her family and it's and it's you know he says <laughs> yeah exactly and and peter says to her he's like you know and the old gamora definitely wouldn't have found you know wouldn't have called home with uh like a bunch of criminals which is ironic because the guardians are a bunch of criminals um but uh yeah i just love that and i loved everything that she did in between that the I bet we were fun line oh, yeah. was Whew. like, oh, that was a good one. damn, I'm like, geez, <laughs> like it's just so much like heartbreak baked into every single line of this. Um, uh, but what what did you kind of feel about? Uh, yeah, I, I echo right? basically everything you said. I thought Zoe Zodana did a, a fantastic job playing a new version of the same character. Um, I thought her and Chris Pratt did a really good job of kind of still having that kind of uh chemistry where chemistry. it's like yeah you know like obviously a different kind yeah it's a different kind of chemistry where their characters don't or one character you know still knows you as this other person but you have no idea who this person is and yeah. to go from obviously you know what we've seen in previous movies to this is a big shift and you know sometimes it might not be that easy to pull off but i thought they did an awesome job with it um mm -hmm. but yeah all that i thought was great uh trying to trying to think back to like what else happened um i just thought the i like that i thought oh, yeah, the progression yeah. just of her kind of you know i guess in a way understanding where he's coming from but also going her own way i thought that all worked yeah. really well in the movie yeah like because i mean i think about uh and we can kind of use this let's, we can transition on to talking about uh Chris Pratt and and um, uh, Peter Quill um, forgot the character the main character's name. Um, <laughs> I, I I think about that scene with the spacesuits uh, of again, absolutely incredible way that James Gunn can weave you know a serious moment and then just push it right into this great comedic moment. Oh yeah, um, uh -huh. where he thinks he's on the private channel with her, and I just love that he's like. You know, you know, we were we were we were in love like I like you. You loved me and I, I loved you and we cared about each other. And she's just so respectful and just like understanding that. And she just like looks at him and she's like. I you know, I don't I don't think we were mm -hmm. like I'm so like I just like I, I'm sorry. I just don't think we were. And he's just so like lost and when he says to her and he's like i mean if you just like if like if you just if you just try like mm -hmm. if you just tried to open up like and he's so sincere in that moment and heartbroken and like he almost knows like 
you know, she's gone. Like she, like it's not her. Like he, and he knows that. And I, I just, I just loved those moments uh, from him throughout this movie. Uh, and I really like the the funny moment when when she first comes into the movie, um, and uh, he's like, "Why didn't you tell?" Me? He's like, "What the hell, Nebula? Why didn't you tell me you were in contact with Gamora?" And she's like, "Cause I didn't want you to freak out." And he's like, <laughs> "Freak out!" And she she goes like that. Yeah, like, you're freaking out right now. Um, I thought I just thought that that I, I everything with them. Um, and then, of course, in all the trailers, the scene with them in the in the elevator, um, you know, I think is is really, really good, too, uh, at uh, at Orgo Corp. Um, yeah, they just have a lot of great scenes. To, I'm really just thinking back just how many scenes they have together, mm. which is a, they have a lot uh, like they really, really uh, still have a lot together. Um, and again, leading up to kind of that final moment of the like, you know, I, I bet we were fun together. And he's just like, like, you wouldn't believe, mm -hmm. you know, it just these characters feel so real to me. Like, I'm sorry, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I don't know if you know this, but uh, like ha Han and Leia to Peter and Gamora, like, the, what are we talking about here? Right. I mean, not like in terms of uh, character development, relationship development. I mean, mm -hmm. like I like what I love you. I know. I bet we were fun, like you wouldn't believe. Like that. That to me is like <laughs> I, I got. I, I I was almost crying, not tearing up. I was almost crying just on that. <laughs> like, let alone anything to do with Rocket. Um, and I think it just goes to the chemistry that these guys built up together over all these movies and everything like that. Um, uh, but yeah, I I think kind of moving over to to peter um uh, well i'll go I, i'll go second i guess because i i went with the gamora stuff but how did, how did you kind of feel about chris pratt in this one uh with his his performance peter in general um kind of how he carries himself in this movie uh everything like that huh what what, 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 uh, what are your thoughts on the yeah i'm with you on his, his performance in general i thought it was amazing i think it you know might be one of the best his best performances in the mcu probably Mm -hmm. um, and maybe one of his best performances in his career period. Um, but yeah, he, you know, he's kind of going through it that, you know, he's dealing with a lot. He's got to you yeah. know, save his best friend in in uh, in rocket. And then he's got to come to grips with the fact that this Gamora is just not his Gamora and he needs mm -hmm. to accept that. And, you know, he's not going to get her back. And although, you know, MCU, you never know, I guess. Um, but, but you know what? Actually, I don't think that's going to happen because I'm pretty sure Zoe Zelanya said she's, she ain't coming back. So uh, we continue on. Um, but, yeah, I just think he did an awesome job in this movie. Um, and he acted his ass off, in my opinion. Uh, I don't know what else there is to say. He, just, he, he really went through it in this movie. And I thought mm -hmm. Chris Pratt did that wonderfully. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I really think – I know we kind of talked about it with Mario – I just, you know, the guy just gets so much flack, and it's like, not to go into, you know, back to the Ted Lasso, you know, comment commentary mm. conversation, but just like, you know, I, the guy just seems like a nice guy to right. everybody that he interacts with. You know, Tom Cruise is crazy, but you know, we all love Tom Cruise. I, I between this and Mario Man, Chris Pratt is like, obviously, two very different roles. Um, you know, Mario, I thought he did a really good job with, but this was just, just another level. I mean, mm. I loved, I loved him on, I loved him as Andy on Parks and Rec, you know, 10, 15 years ago and everything like that. And to see him deliver a performance like this at the center of this movie, whether it's in the beginning of the movie with him being drunk at the, at the, um, kind of like lounge thing where, where Rocket finds him at the, at the beginning of the movie, um, Man, just like these these little moments, like when Neb when they're all carrying him and the title card comes up and everything. But then when Nebula puts him to bed, and he grabs her arm and he's like, "I love you, Gamora." Like the look on Karen Gillan's face and the look in her eyes is just like so sad because mm -hmm. she's just like, "This is a he's a literal like shell of who he used to be." And like I said earlier, I I have specific examples on the top of my tongue uh, that I 
really loved the first time and really looked out for and loved even more the second time. And one is, um, two people we'll talk about in a minute here, Drex and uh, uh, Mantis, have this great moment where Mantis, you know, gives Drax this, uh, like, thing to recite to him about the, you know, you've been in a pond leaping from lily pad to lily pad, and I think it's time you learn how to swim. Mm. Uh, which, again, is just a beautiful James Gunn line, but uh, I love that moment. And then, you know, Mantis is like, like, yay, good job, Drax. And then Peter looks over, it because Drax is like, did I do good? And then Peter looks at Mantis and looks back at Drax, and he's he ju- he doesn't go like, you guys he's just like mm. oh okay and then just walks away like he's so depressed and i feel it in the character like i feel every single thing that he's going through and i got to again go to the go to the um the track list um cuz i feel like you know awesome mix volume 3 is is a character in itself the song do you realize uh which I can't even like read right now. Yeah, do re- do you realize by the flaming lips? I think that is my either first or second favorite song from this. And it's the song that plays mm-hmm. when they put on all of their suits, when they fully suit up to go to Counter Earth to save Rocket, and it's just that shot, I don't know if you remember, it's that shot that starts outside the ship and it goes all the way through the ship up to him. And he's just standing there with his hands on the railing, just looking straight ahead out into space. And then it, the camera comes all the way around to behind his shoulders and looks out. And it's right after that scene where he's like, you know, why should I be surprised? Everybody in my life dies. You know, uh, my mom, you know, Gamora, um, you know, now Rocket, like all like all that, like everybody in my Yondu, like everybody in my life dies. Um, and then it hits with that song uh and you just see him staring out into space and i'm like this guy is like you said he is just going through it like and and everything even when there's no dialogue i feel that through chris pratt's performance Mm -hmm. um many many times in the movie and then obviously the the big trailer moment of the, the scream uh you know when when rocket does uh die however short an amount of time that was um that yell that he gives out is just insane and even cutting back to the beginning of the movie where he's supposed to be drunk and mantis is like you need to get the med packs like right now like what are you do like and he's just kind of like mm-hmm. like he's like he's like overwhelmed he's he just woke up he's like overstimulated and she's like you need to like wake up and get your shit together right yeah. now and then he has that moment like 20 minutes later when he finally like is sobered up and he's like, you know, if I hadn't been drinking, I, you know, I could have been more with it. I could have done something, you know, quicker for Rocket. Um, and I, I just think he did such a great job and they put so much into Peter Quill. And I guess just to take him all the way to the end, uh, I almost cried at the uh, uh we uh we were pro or I bet we were fun line. I completely cried when he went back to Earth, mm. uh to his to his grandfather's house. When he hugged him, I was just I was like done. And I saw people out there, um, saying, and I want to know how you felt about it. I saw people out there saying like that didn't really track for me. Like I don't remember ever Peter being like uh, you know <laughs> oh like I got to go back to Earth or something like yeah. that like. And, uh, like, specifically, people were saying, like, you know, the whole gist of this trilogy is found family and everything. And it's like, yeah, but at a certain point, too, it's sometimes healthy if you've been running from something all your life. And more importantly, running from the lie you're telling yourself. Because he tells Mantis, he's like, you know, he screamed in my face and pushed me out of the room. We saw that in Guardians 1. That is not what happened. He leaned down and was like, hey, Pete, it's all going to be okay. And then Peter just ran. So, like, he's lying to himself about his grandfather and about Earth. Um, And James Gunn, around Infinity War time, when people were like, you know, has he ever been back to Earth? He was like, why the hell would he want to go back to Earth? Like, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, that's the place that took his mother from him. 
Um, and so I thought that, that scene where he was reunited with his grandpa uh, really, really hit for me um, on a really emotional level. But what what did you kind of feel about that? Did you think it tracked for you that, like, he would want to go back to Earth um, to see what's left of a family for him? I don't want to say it didn't track initially for me. I was just kind of caught yeah. off guard just because I didn't really see that coming, honestly. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, talking more about it and talking through it a little bit, you know, I think it tracks a little bit better. Yeah. Um, so that was really nice to see. It didn't really hit with me emotionally, but, you know, I was happy to, to see that. Um, just kind of to keep things moving a little bit. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's talk about real quick about, you know, Nebula. And then we'll get into Drax yeah. and Mantis. And then I think we can probably go to... I just want to talk about those post credit scenes because I'm actually very in- intrigued by both of them. Yeah. Um, so Nebula, what'd you think? For this movie? I thought Karen she was Gillen. fantastic. I, th- I yeah. thought that Karen Gillan has gotten better and better with every single movie. Mm-hmm. Um, every single portrayal of Nebula. I thought she was fantastic in the holiday special. Um, and I thought this was easily her like Chris Pratt. Yeah. I, you know, you could argue maybe, maybe he's had better performances even as star Lord. But Karen Gillan, I don't think there's any argument. This is easily the most she's had to do. Probably besides, like, Endgame was probably the other one where she had the most to do because mm-hmm. she was really, like, one of the main six people in Endgame, to be honest. Um, and then, uh, you know, just the emotion and the care. And one thing I really liked about this that we haven't really touched on is they're, they're past the whole, like, yeah, well, this guy... They're just openly, they just love each other. They call Mm -hmm. each other family. They openly care about each other. And when she's like, when her, and we could transition over to Mantis and Drax, when her Mantis and Drax are getting into that argument, um, and, you know, she's like, oh my God, you two are just, you know, useless. Like, what, like, all you do is if anybody shows weakness, you're just there to support it. And he doesn't even know what the hell to do. And, and Mantis, like, freaks out at him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and Pom Clementif, too. You know, I, I, she was phenomenal in this, but we'll talk about Mantis in a second. But, um, within that moment, when everybody's fighting, and Rocket is waking up and getting dressed, and then kind of, we almost forget that Rocket is, like, awake Mm -hmm. (laughs) because they're yelling so much, and then over the comms, you know, the whole, he's like, you know, the important thing is we're all okay. Mm -hmm. And Nebula's like, she's like, Rocket? Like, she, like, looks, like, to Mm -hmm. middle distance, and is like, she's, like, like, stunned to hear his voice. Um... And just that moment from Karen Gillan, and like I talked about in the beginning when she's putting Quill to bed, um, I thought that that moment was fantastic as well. Uh, I I think she just really got to open up in this. And then at the end of the movie when she's dancing with everybody and like laughing, I was getting emotional with that too because, I mean, this this is a a girl who had everything stripped. I mean, Gamora at least knows her culture and where Mm. she came from. Nebula, like she says at the end of the movie, she's like, I'm going to take care of nowhere and make it the home that I never even had, that I never Mm -hmm. even knew. You know, Gamora at least knew where Thanos took her from. Nebula, she, she, her mind was wiped. Her memories were wiped. Her personality was destroyed by her father of all people. Like, so to see that kind of full circle and to see Karen Gillan perform that full circle, Mm -hmm. I thought was fantastic. At least he picked a nice set of eyes, I guess, to replace her old one. It is true. It is true. <laughs> that 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 joke I think still worked in even in the movie after the trailer. It did. Even I think seeing that in the everything trailer, that I thought it, yeah thought it worked. Um, like I said, I was just gripped <clears throat> in the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I'm with you on Karen Gillan. You know, I thought she was fantastic. Uh, definitely had uh, the most to do uh, out mm-hmm. of any of the movies that she's been in previous. Well, I mean, obviously yeah. like you said Endgame, but um, mm-hmm. yeah, just kind of see her develop and open up a little bit more in this movie was was really nice to see. Um, and I don't know how she like just does that. She's so good at that. Vo- I don't know. Like that voice just never wavers. For, like, I feel like it's probably hard to keep talking in that same voice, like consistently. Um, mm-hmm. But she, you know, she knocks it out of the park. Um, it always bat. I just forget that she not only has like a Scottish that. accent, but <laughs> yeah. is like pitching it down like right. five levels. Yeah. 
Um, but no, I thought, you know, Nebula was great. Uh, and like you said, that scene where they're all kind of in the in the big ship and they're all having mm-hmm. an argument and that stuff. I thought that was all great. Um, moving over to Mantis and and, and yeah. Drax. Uh, you know, I, I loved both of them again in the movie. Um, for me, Drax was... Oh, don't do it. No, he was great. Like, <laughs> David Batiste is great. We've already established yeah. he's a good actor. Um, and Drax was good. You know, he's the biggest comedic part of this group. And mm. for me, you know, not every... And that, that was probably my other, like, kind of knock on this movie. It's not every single joke hit for me. And mm. it was probably, like, it was a pretty low batting average. Um, my, my favorite is a Drax one where it's not even like him saying anything. It's just when they land on, uh, what is it called? Ne- Never earth or, uh, Oh, counter earth, counter earth. And he gets out of the ship and all the people are looking or all the animal people are looking and he takes the ball and just throws it at the girl and the girl falls over and starts crying. I love they all like freak out. Like, yeah. Ah! I, just, I thought that was so funny. Um, but oh, some, Dude, some of his, <clears throat> I gotta take a beat because yeah. some of his little moments for me, and I, I totally get it. If if it's not because he's he is the most humorous and mm-hmm. he's a very particular kind of joke. Humor. Yeah, like just some of the little like when he, you hear the guy on the motorcycle coming and Drax goes, and then he just like decks he just clotheslines him. Yeah. That guy's probably dead. Yeah, and then he gets on the bike and he just goes to Mantis. He goes get on the bike and she's like no we have to stay with the ship yeah. and he's like yeah we're gonna we're gonna ride back to the ship and she's like just over there yeah and he just goes yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she, then she gets on and he just takes off yeah. and then like when they're all yelling at orgo corp and she, i i'm i swear to you both times i i laughed i burst out laughing when he goes, when they, when they're like all yelling at each other, and Gamora's like, "You put our spacesuits in the out the airlock," <laughs> and Drax goes, "Are we fake mad again, <laughs> Mantis? You asshole!" <laughs> I was <laughs> dying. Yeah. I literally was dying at that. That was so. That was so hilarious, Mantis. You asshole. Or when he would call the kids, "Hello, moron." I can't, like that was that was so can you, funny. Can you explain to me though? Speaking of the kids, can you just explain how he he just he just like happens to be like, oh yeah, I know the language. It's like, why did you say that earlier? I think that's the idea. Is just that he they constantly undervalue him in Nebula enough, specifically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's the, the the. But then also, I actually have seen a lot of cool stuff out there about uh, how Drax is might be you know. Neuro, neurodivergent or on the spectrum or oh, something and that geez. that that's kind of a whole other level right, yeah. of kind of you know he does have this innocence about him because he he may be on the spectrum in a character like that i think that is so cool and i also just love the message of this movie which i think is why dave batista even though he has complained about this character uh or just you know not complained not in a vin diesel you know Dwayne Johnson type of mm-hmm. public complaining way just kind of like has been like, well, you know, he's not, he doesn't do much destroying, does he? No. <laughs> and to have that come full circle yeah. in this last movie and have Nebula be the one who was, you know, yelling at him the whole movie going, you know, no, I need you here with me uh, because, you know, you weren't born to destroy things. You were born to born be to a be dad. A, yeah, yeah. And I was like, God damn, James Gunn. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, shit. Like, it was so... Every single character had a perfect bow tied on them at the end of this movie. Um, Mantis is another one. I, I, I How did you feel about Mantis in this one? I'll be honest. Her, like, so... Her, her whole story kind of, like, escapes my mind. Um, she was... Again, she was great. Uh, mm-hmm. Acting was great. Acting was on point. It was just, like... There's so much going on that it's like I just forgot like what her yeah what her kind of and you know I I know that obviously she wants to go off on her own and find uh kind of just find herself I guess yeah um, for what I gather just because she was oh I know speaking of Mantis but my other big issue not big issue but my other issue with this movie and this goes back to the Christmas special 
why do they have to be siblings? It has no effect on any of this. I don't know. I, th- I, I like it, though. I just feel like. But they like mention like, it in this movie and it's I, like, OK, that's going to come back around. Right. And it never does. And it's like, OK, well, why do we care? <laughs> I mean, that is totally fair. <clears throat> I, I just I just looked at it as like. You you expect it to come back around. Right. And so just the fact that it just doesn't. It's right. just part of who they are. I thought, and it does, but it does kind of inform their parting of the ways at the end, though, because he mm. he's doing the whole like, you know, or, or actually towards the sorry towards the middle of the movie, um, which again was a great joke of he's like, why would I want to go back to Earth? Everybody that there dies when they're like fifty, mm. and she's like, people die when they're fifty. Yeah. <laughs> are you about to die? She's like, like why she... do you even bother being born? <laughs> What's yeah, the why point? do you even bother being? <laughs> That was so funny. Or like uh, her and Drax, they're like, you didn't even ask me if I wanted a Zargna. And he's like, they're all gone. <laughs> it's like, that was so funny. Yeah. Um. But yeah, even even like I said, Pom Clementif's more emotional moments in this movie, I think her biggest emotional moment with the whole, um, you know, blowing up right back at Nebula. Right, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. About calling Drax stupid, about saying like, well, you know, he, he is stupid, but he's sweet and he cares and mm. it's more than I can say for you. And like, you know, he's the only one of us that doesn't hate himself. And uh, just that that whole scene, I thought that she really, really um, carried it well for mm-hmm. somebody who I, I'm not going to say that, like, I didn't think that she was a good actress, but she was just somebody I had never seen before ever. And Mantis was kind of a, a weird. She still is, obviously, but like it was just kind of this like addition in volume two that was just like mantis is here now mm-hmm. and you're and you're just kind of like man she is very like kooky and weird and to take it from that to somebody who like genuinely has emotions and has value and values her own opinion about the team she's like i'm a valued member of this team i get a voice you know it's not just nebula deciding everything and so i really i really like the back and forth kind of with all three of those um together but um yeah, anything left on Mantis? And then the last thing I want to get before we go to the post-credit, uh, just real quick, what were your thoughts on the kind of nowhere, Cosmo, uh, yeah, Kraglin kind of stuff? Yeah, I to talk about stuff. that. Uh, yeah. the, the Kraglin kind of uh, Michael Rooker, that, that didn't really work for me, uh, that whole thing with okay. Yondu. I don't know, it just didn't, mm-hmm. didn't really connect. Um, I, I was a sucker for the good boy or good dog, bad dog thing. I thought that was really, yeah, really that fun. was great. Yeah, <laughs> and then at the end, the payoff. Yeah, a dog, and uh, he's like, yeah, a good dog. dog. And then she goes, <laughs> I was like, damn. Um, but yeah, and, and I did like in the beginning too. Uh, and I actually had a thought because we know this movie is years delayed, so it's been written for years. And I saw a complaint that was like, it's it's three projects later, and and Craglin is still struggling with the arrow i think what happened was this movie was written with him struggling with the arrow at the beginning of it and then mastering it by the end and after this movie was written craglin was in three other things that i don't think they were planning on him being Mm. in so i think that's probably why he's been struggling with the arrow for so long is because this movie was written well before the christmas special well before thor love and thunder you know a, a bunch of his previous stuff um, I didn't, I don't really know if it was a, t- sorry, this isn't, I don't, it, the whole like thing in Thor, Love and Thunder where like Kraglin keeps marrying people. I don't know why we had, I don't know where, I don't know why that was never addressed in this or anything, but, um, yeah, I, I like that. But at the beginning when he was like trying to do the whistle and he whistles at Adam Warlock mm-hmm. and it just hits his cheek and he goes, Oh yeah. Who threw that at me? <laughs> Who threw that? <laughs> I was like, that was, that was so funny. Just like this uh, child. Um, but yeah, I like that. And I like I like Nowhere as their base and everything like that too. But um, yeah, so we end the movie. Rocket, alive again. Oh, sorry, real uh, quick. Let, uh, oh. let, real quick question just before we go to the post credits. How shocked were you that nobody was dead? Um, After the fact, I, I feel like... It's the only way that they could have gone. 
Yeah. During the movie, I was like, they they kept teasing oh, wow, it. Nobody died. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, Drax one point Drax got shot. Got shot? Yeah. 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 Rocket at the beginning of the movie. Right. I mean, yep. Jesus Christ, homie got shot point blank with a laser beam to the yeah. chest. I was like, dude, that guy is dead. I was like, he is gone. But luckily not. Uh, but then let's uh, we kind of glossed over it. Uh, Peter is uh, three for three on. Uh, turn it into an icicle in space he's done Ooh. it in every movie uh in this one i thought he was uh you know what would you do for a klondike bar i thought he was about to um bust out of his wrapper for a second there he was starting to to puff up and everything um and i know we talked about that a little bit earlier on on the adam warlock side of things but uh, i'm glad that that peter uh made it out mm -hmm. uh although i i did i said on this show too i i did have a uh a worry that I think that I thought Peter could go just to be like the most emotional thing possible for this, for this to do mm -hmm. is like Peter sacrificing his life for rocket or something. But, um, so, uh, did you just ask me a question? Uh, I just oh, about, asked you, uh, about yeah. that. Nobody died. That's yeah. right. Um, but yeah, so speaking of nobody dies, uh, not even the high evolutionary. Um, Although I do, again, I like how brutalistic and just down to business uh, Chris Pratt. You know what? Let's let's just real quick. We're about to end here. Let's talk real quick here about um, the action. Okay, yeah. Because I, 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 I thought it easily the best action of the trilogy. Mm -hmm. I think that hallway fight, the, the no sleep till Brooklyn fight was masterful. I mean, the fact that James Gunn has said that uh, basically no stunt doubles – for the main actors made the final cut. Obviously they use stunt doubles, um, but that most of that is them. Uh, and you can really tell that with, uh, with Chris Pratt and, um, and uh, uh, Gamora um, and Zoe Saldana, you can really tell that that is really them doing all that choreography. Um, but yeah, I thought the action and even the stuff of the Orgo Corp with the kind of breakout, the kind of like, break in and yeah. then subsequent breakout uh i thought both sides of that were really really good um and i thought all the action in the beginning with adam warlock was really really good too but um yeah what did you just thoughts on yeah, the action uh, and everything and then we can move into post credit agree um i think my favorite action scene was was in the end when they're in the the big ship uh mm -hmm. And that whole kind of slow motion slash gore. By the way, this movie's a little scary too. We didn't touch on that when they peel off the high evolutionary's face. Yeah, uh, a little scary. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but when you know, there's somebody was like, "That's what Red Skull should have looked like." If that's what Red Skull looked like in 2011, people would have ran for the hills. <laughs> like what? <laughs> that is that is terrifying. Um slashing aliens in the in the hallway that yeah. slow motion those like kind of turning shots you know all that mm -hmm. stuff that that was all really cool um oh well and done. the brutal the kill when he drops the guy to the earth when he mm -hmm. literally falls down and crushes the guy into the earth and then drowns him yeah i was like holy shit and then there's even in that scene with him and groot <laughs> there's a moment where peter goes he goes kill them all like yeah. and they're just like i'm like oh my god like they really were just ready to he was not messing around in this mm. movie man he was really not messing around but uh post credit scenes first one so first one uh we got uh we got rocket the whole new lineup uh so at the end of the movie everybody goes their separate ways um rocket decides to stay on he stays on as the captain of the guardians so we get a guardian team of uh the girl uh who i believe is um uh, I think her name is Fala Vel, mm -hmm. uh, but she's basically in the vein of a she's in the Captain Marvel Marvel Captain Marvel okay. universe. She's a Captain Marvel character mainly. Okay. Um, but uh, she is now part of this team. Uh, we got Kraglin, we got Cosmo, we got Adam Warlock, we got Rocket, of course, um, and then uh, Groot. Uh, I don't think I left anybody out. Uh, oh, and then Cosmo. I don't know if I said Cosmo. Um, is also on the team. So what were your thoughts on this? Just kind of this nice action scene showing Rocket as the leader. Uh, and also within that, I liked that they were like, 
all right, who's going to do it? And Crags, Craglin, it shows so much character growth because Craglin goes, all right, I can do this by myself, like just with the arrow. And then it shows character development on Rocket because Rocket goes, no, let's do it together. Mm -hmm. It'll be faster. But it's also, he shows that he's a good leader and everything like that. So what were your thoughts on kind of new Guardians team? Uh, yeah, that was all interesting. It, uh, I didn't know who that little that younger girl was, so thank you for filling me in. Um and we don't get a Guardians of the Galaxy will return at the end. So that leaves me to believe that it's kind of like a, well, here's, you know, if we ever kind of go back to it, Revisit. what do we do? Yeah. You know, they're here, you know. I think um, we're going to see them I would imagine pretty soon. So. Uh, but yeah, I thought that was all really cool. Um, mm. And then obviously the second one we get is Peter going back home uh, to Earth, seeing his grandfather. Um, grandfather, very happy to see him. Very happy. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, they're they're sitting at the sitting at the kitchen table. They're eating breakfast and some I, I missed some conversation about somebody mowing the lawn or something. I don't know. And um, then we get uh, Peter Quill will, will return, which I was shocked. Um, excuse me. The legendary, legendary Star Lord, Star Lord will, will return. return, which I was shocked. Yeah. Uh, I thought Chris Pratt was done after this. Um, were you were you as surprised or no? I I thought it was interesting that out of <clears throat> out of oh my god, out of the entire cast, yeah, the three people that never said anything one way or another of this is my last one was Karen Gillan, Bradley Cooper, and Chris Pratt. Mm. everybody else said this yeah, is my last done. one yeah, yeah yeah yeah. they everybody else said this was my last. actually palm clemente i don't know if she said one way or another but those three i know never said anything about it so i was not surprised um because i equally was not surprised when i thought he was about to die um i was like oh all right he's really done <laughs> like the, yeah. your, his face is about to blow up um but uh, I equally was not surprised at this because, you know, Star it's Star Wars. I mean, he's a, he's a character outside of the Guardians. Mm -hmm. You know, he is bigger than that. Just like I think, you know, look at Rocket and Nebula in Endgame. They worked completely mm -hmm. away from the Guardians. They were just Avengers in that movie, and they were Earth-based and checking back in with Carol Danvers and mm -hmm. Rhodey and everybody. You know, I think I would love to see that. Uh, for Chris Pratt, you know, I would love just let Star Lord show up in, um, you know, Kang Dynasty, but not as, oh, we need to go get the Guardians. Just like have it be, no, Star Lord's just an Earth based hero right now. You know, just like in the comics, you'd have Avengers go be on the Guardians and you have Guardians mm -hmm. come to Earth and be on the Avengers. Um, I, I think that's a great opportunity to do that now that you have him on Earth. Um, maybe we see him in, like, Wonder Man, or maybe we see him in, like, She-Hulk Season 2 or something. You know, I don't know, anything like that. Uh, Secret Invasion. I don't know, maybe Chris Pratt's in that show that they filmed six months ago and just nobody knows about it. Um, but, yeah, I really, really like that. And, and like I said, it really did hit emotionally for me. But what were your kind of thoughts when you saw, um, you know, not the Guardians will return, but that uh, that the legendary Star Lord uh, will, uh, and also just kind of circle back. Do you think that that core team of uh, of Guardians is going to return? Um, yeah, I was surprised to see that he would come back, just because I I honestly assumed that they were all done after Gunn mm -hmm. was gone. Uh, so to see that he, you know, there's a possibility of him coming back. That's interesting. You know, I wonder where he'll show up or where he fits into the, in the universe going forward. Uh, but I do think that we will see a return of the current kind of new band of characters uh, at some point. I don't know if it'll be like mm -hmm. their own movie. Um, yeah. Because, you know, I feel like you kind of have to build up. Like, obviously, you have Groot and Rocket. Uh, but just like kind of all of them together, you have to build up that kind of. Uh, what's the word? Uh Camaraderie. camaraderie or you know like connection. chemistry but yeah connection between all yeah. of them to make like a full movie maybe so maybe you mm -hmm. see them show up in a, a show or a movie like a different movie or something somebody said uh i think it was uh not new rock stars i think it was so screen crush they put out a theory video that was like maybe we could see uh 
you know, when everybody else is dealing with all this multiverse stuff, uh, maybe we could see like a cosmic kind of saga playing out at the same time. And mm-hmm. rather than making a Guardians 4, you could make a movie called like Annihilation or something mm-hmm. um, and have like Rocket be one of the main characters. But it's not necessarily a Guardians movie. Right. Um, so kind of like what you were saying, I think I could see that happening very easily that they're like, hey, Bradley Cooper is going to be the lead in this film. But it's not a Guardians movie and it's not a Rocket movie. It's it's just kind of a movie about the cosmic side of the Marvel Universe. And I think you could, you know, whatever you call that. You could just call it something totally different, too. But um, I think that'll definitely be back. But but what what were your kind of last thing? What are your kind of hopes to see for Star-Lord being on Earth? Uh, I guess to kind of... Would you say he's probably he has to assimilate to wife on earth at this point i would say so yeah because i mean it, it's <laughs> what was yeah, he... I mean, he didn't even know how to drive a car right so i would be very interested to see that i don't know how that works mm. in a movie or anything like that but uh maybe build relationships you know find somebody new on earth you know yeah. I, I maybe he won't ever because you know that was you know gamora was the love of his love of his life obviously but mm. you know maybe he see him build new relationships um that's probably what i would like to see I, again i don't know how you fit that into anything but <laughs> yeah <clears throat> i would love to see a star lord and and winter soldier team up mm. um yeah i just i don't know man i i think a, a, a way that you could i think i think the mcu needs to get away sometimes from these big of having to eventize everything and just make like an iron man 2 you know what i mean Mm -hmm. like just make like a special a a disney plus special presentation and you're like that's a goofy idea but like just have it be a star lord and and winter soldier team up and just be like these were the two guys that the avengers had available for this mission Mm -hmm. you you know what i mean like something like that i i would love to see something like that from him i just hope that wherever we see any of these characters that and I don't know if it's even possible, but I just hope that they would be written with the same care yeah. that James Gunn wrote them, mm-hmm. which, like I said, do I think that's really possible? I really don't think that's possible. I don't think that a, a lot of these characters, I don't think will be written this well the next time we see them, but I could be totally wrong on that. Um, anything else on Guardians? Nope, that's it. All right. That will do it for our entire spoiler discussion on Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Let us know in the comments down below what you thought of the movie. Thank you guys so much for joining us on this video. We'll catch you in the next one.